The Lamp Project. I'm Alexandra Cantel, and I'm a transdisciplinary artist based in Los Angeles, California. My art practice is focused on dyslexia and language-based disabilities, and um, what it is like when one has dyslexia or language-based dis disability and living in our society and the emotional effects it brings. Dyslexia, it's a um, hidden disability. It's not visual, you can't tell, I'm not in a wheelchair, and so um, where that would be a physical disability and you know if someone's on crutches you know that you know they may have broken their knee or something, um, ankle. And then with dyslexia you can hide it really well until you have to use written language. My experience being dyslexic is a difficulty with language and um, everyone's experience is different so for me specifically it's about a retrieval of words. It's as if I have a Rolodex in my head of words that um, you've got your similarities, your um, antonyms, your just words in alphabetical order, and when I try to retrieve a word, one usually quickly retrieves the word they're looking for because it's filed in the correct location. Unfortunately, my words are not filed in the correct location, and so when I try to say or speak, I oftentimes will use um, a word that's close but not quite right or slightly off. Headstrong Nation is a nonprofit organization based up in Berkeley, and what they're really focused on is advocacy and providing and sharing information to other dyslexics and people with language-based learning disabilities. Headstrong Nation has an annual retreat for a small group of people, um, adults who are dyslexic, and it's three or four days, and it's really about creating community. The first retreat I attended was last year, and you just spend this really intimate time together getting to know other people who are dyslexic from all around the United States, actually all around the world. Um, there was a few people from other countries there. And everyone had different upbringings, but with the common similarity of being dyslexic, we had these common shared emotional relationships that were amazing. Being there, I was not only invited as an artist to lead a workshop, but I'm also dyslexic, and so I participated in the whole retreat. And in addition, when I was doing the art workshop, I wasn't just leading, I sat with the table and I became part of the project and making myself extremely vulnerable along with everyone else and so we built just a tighter relationship. My goal though was really to get to the emotional component that they had, I believe, stored really deep down and hadn't really expressed or shared in a long time and feeling like we were in a safe community, I was using my transdisciplinary art practice as a way to really get to the core and be able to share together and so we went around and spoke about the questions and answered them. And the questions were all from another source. I had taken them from a yoga manual that was reflecting on identity and potentials. And I had come across these questions and I really realized that for this group of people, I thought that most people would answer them and they would be rooted in their experience being dyslexic. Once we all went around, um, and spoke about our answers and experiences, everyone was related. So their identity is so related to their dyslexia and it brought up a lot of emotions and a lot of people were um, just crying, joy, anger. I mean, we, there were people yelling. It was just kind of a really intense experience, but we all shared it together and out of this was this like amazing vulnerability. And so for me, that was where this like community was even built even tighter. And that, I think, is really what was the powerful part of the art practice, was even strength, was strengthening the community, not necessarily just doing a craft project and making something um, that looks pretty. So while at the Headstrong Retreat, I led a workshop that was you know, all based on conversation. When I've been invited to do workshops with children, I um, have been invited to schools and I am invited to lead an art workshop. And so these have been about middle school age students. And so I want them to actually make something. Um, and what I first do is I introduce who I am, I show them some of my work and I explain how I'm dyslexic. So right there I've built an initial bond because I'm one of them, they're one of me, we're together again. So even though they're younger than I am, that same community is built like it is at Headstrong. So. They start brainstorming, they come up with just the most powerful phrases about their experiences. And then I give them all stencils and graphite, loose graphite. We make a complete mess in the classroom. And 
they initially are hesitant to use it, and I let them know that there's, it's in the art classroom, there's no misspelled words, there's no straight lines, have fun. And all of a sudden, they're like flipping the stencils and moving them around, and the words are all twisted, and like, they're getting really into it. And they all of a sudden can express themselves using language. And so, by being able to be in all these different realms at the same time, I'm able to see where there might be an opportunity for me to really have a deeper engagement and um, that's really exciting for me to just see what's going to unfold. What you are experiencing is what it is like for me every time I read written language. The Lamp Project, spotlighting and supporting socially engaged artists and the causes they champion.